Hey, Dr. C here with you. So let's talk all about cholesterol. And this is going to be a two-part series. In this first one, I'm going to talk all about the connections between thyroid disease and cholesterol levels. Cholesterol is a big deal. It is a risk factor for heart disease, and having thyroid disease makes cholesterol more of a problem. In the second installment, I'll talk about what to do about it. <laughs> so let's dive on in. For starters, we want to think through the main types of thyroid conditions that are out hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, Hashimoto's. Here's the thing, all of these can affect cholesterol levels. And even without knowing that there's any symptoms or problems, they can raise the risk for heart disease. And the first step is just understanding what this connection is. What I'm gonna talk through here is really about how these things tie in, what cholesterol means, how the risks associate with thyroid disease, how you can screen for it. And in the next one, we'll talk more about some practical solutions for that. So for starters, thyroid disease and heart health in general. You know, overall, those with thyroid disease, the risk for heart disease is higher, like two to five times higher. And heart disease, well, this is the number one preventable cause of death worldwide. This is a big thing. Cancers are number two for cause of death. They're back and forth, but heart disease is more preventable of the two. So being aware of this is super critical. Now I'll talk through next the different versions of thyroid disease, how they can affect your heart. So first off, let's talk about hypothyroidism. This is where there's just too little hormone coming out of the thyroid. And this does correlate with heart disease, mostly in a direct way with its effects upon cholesterol. And here's why. So cholesterol is something that we make, we absorb from our diet, and we pull back out of the bloodstream into our liver and our muscles. When there's too little thyroid hormones present, the main part of that that doesn't work as well is the clearing of cholesterol. So we absorb whatever from the diet, we make however much, and then we pull some out. But we don't pull out as much with thyroid disease. And right now, having cholesterol elevations are super common. When they're high, that correlates with more risk of plaque formation, heart attack, stroke, all the rest of that. And currently, about 29% of U.S. adults have high LDL cholesterol levels. Total cholesterol, that's more like about 38% of adults. And that's defined as levels about like 200 or greater. Now, these vary a lot based upon some parts of the country, some population groups, demographics, but it gives you a general idea that this is really common. So we're thinking about heart disease in the context of heart attacks, stroke, and then peripheral artery disease, and then also vision problems. Alzheimer's dementia, kidney disease. These are all things that are tied to poor circulation. And hypothyroidism makes these cholesterol problems worse. In fact, those with hypothyroidism, the rates of high LDL are actually like 60 to 70%. So almost exactly twice what they are in the general population. And then just total cholesterol, that's 70 to 80%. So yeah, 70 to 80% of those with hypothyroidism have higher total cholesterol. And we see these same kind of stats play out in actual heart disease, that there's more heart disease as well. And we think through also about hyperthyroidism. And this is most commonly Graves' disease, toxic nodular goiter. We see similar problems, but for different reasons here. In these cases, the thyroid hormones are putting too much of a stimulation on the heart itself. And over time, that can cause palpitations, shortness of breath, fatigue, but then also just damage. We can get irregular heart rhythms, such as atrial fibrillation. That can also raise the risk for stroke because the heart is affecting the blood viscosity and causing the blood to clot more readily. And this also has a big effect just weakening the heart muscle, raising the risk for heart failure, blood pressure fluctuations as well. So that's hypo and hyper. Well, what about Hashimoto's? And you know, if you're not clear on the hypo-Hashimoto's connection, I've got a lot of videos and a lot of blogs that talk about that. The short answer is most everyone who's hypothyroid has Hashimoto's. Now, Hashimoto's is an autoimmune condition where your body is attacking the thyroid. And that attack is mediated by inflammation. And this can correlate with hypothyroidism, but even when it doesn't, there's now been good evidence saying that just high thyroid antibodies, perfectly normal thyroid function, that by itself is a big risk factor for heart attacks and stroke. 
So even independent of cholesterol, now Hashimoto's doesn't change cholesterol as much, but it does change the risk due to higher amounts of inflammation. So before I go too much further, is cholesterol, is this even a real thing? You know, there, there's a lot of books out called the cholesterol myth. There's many who argue that you can drink tons of butter in your coffee and do whatever, and this whole heart disease thing is kind of bogus. And well, it's sad. So one point, one fair point is that everyone doesn't respond the exact same way to different things. So dietary intake of fat doesn't raise blood cholesterol the same way for all people. But for many people, it does. So diets very high in saturated fat, like, you know, carnivore, keto diets, they contain cholesterol. The truth is we can't absorb all that much cholesterol. Some absorb more than others, but most anyone caps off at about 500 milligrams. So once you're getting more than that, you won't absorb any more than that. But the bigger factor is that saturated fat affects LDL clearance. So it changes how much LDL comes out of the bloodstream. So it stays there and we, we make it, but it doesn't come out. And the other argument that we'll hear is that cholesterol is a vital molecule. You know, we need cholesterol. We can't live without it. It makes hormones. It makes cell membranes. Our brains need it. So it can't be a bad thing. There's a lot of partial truth. To, oh, there's a lot of truth to that. But the question is, how much cholesterol do you need for all that stuff to happen? And at what point are you so low that your body can't do its vital functions? Well, in terms of blood levels, if you're below like 30 milligrams per deciliter of cholesterol, then your body can't do some of those things. But 3 0, 30. <laughs> no one can ever really get that low. The thing is, we make cholesterol where we need it. We make it inside of our adrenal glands, our testicles, our ovaries. We generate it when we, we make it in our brain. We make it in these places that it's needed. We don't depend upon cholesterol in the diet or the blood for those roles. It's made on site. And just briefly, those who have denied cholesterol, they come into a couple of categories. The most common category they're just younger people. You know, they're by younger, I, I would include my age. There are some people who are 40s, 50s who are saying that cholesterol is harmless. And the thing is, it takes decades for heart disease to develop for most people. There's kind of a dark joke about a guy who fell off the Empire State Building, you know, and like the 100th floor, 80th floor, 60th floor. And as he was passing the 20th floor, he was heard to say, so far, so good. You know, you can do things that take time to show up and seem like they're working out fine. There's a couple of sad stories I'll mention briefly. One was Seth Roberts. This was the first guy who made butter coffee. He was also behind the whole quantified self movement. There's a video of Seth online and he's speaking to an audience talking about how massive amounts of dietary fat, especially high amounts of butter, can make your brain work better. Well, he gives some very compelling reasons why that might be true. But someone in the audience was a cardiologist and this gentleman raised his hand and said, that's fine, Seth, but that does create a risk. And Seth kind of laughed. The audience kind of laughed. They said, oh, we know better than that now. That's a dead theory. It's, it's, all, it's all come and gone. Yeah, a few months after that talk was done, Seth died at the age of 60 from congestive heart failure. Yeah, it's, it's really, really tragic. Another big one was Bob Harper. He was the trainer, well-known trainer on The Biggest Loser Show. He was on Rachel Ray one day uh, advocating for high-fat diets, intermittent fasting, butter coffee in the morning, you know, arguing that saturated fat was totally harmless. And he was showing Rachel Ray how to make butter coffee and how it was such a good thing and how you could train hard afterwards. A few months after that public episode, which is February 2017, he was age 51 working out in a gym in New York and he barely survived a heart attack. After that, he learned more about this whole world, about cholesterol, fat, heart disease, and he realized he was wrong. He, he wrote his following book was called The Super Carb Diet, about the benefits of healthy carbohydrate. So yeah, there are those who have said that it's not real, but it's real. This is a real thing. And we know this from many lines of evidence. So populations that have the highest LDL levels have the highest rates of coronary heart disease. This is also true for total cholesterol. And we also know that from interventional studies, when cholesterol is lowered, the rate of cardiovascular death goes down. We see this from genetic evidence. So those who genetically have a thing called familial hypercholesterolemia, with very high LDL levels, they have really early heart disease. And we also see the opposite. Those who have extremely low levels of cholesterol have very unusually low rates of heart disease. Now, the other objection comes about, people talk about some of the newer tests, um, C-reactive protein, apolipoprotein B, lipoprotein A, small dense LDL, homocysteine, APOE, 
And many will say things like, well, I don't worry about my cholesterol because my CRP is low, you know. That's a misnomer. So LDL is the central thing for the risk. All the other newer markers, they influence, they, they can amplify LDL or not, but they can't negate LDL. So if you've got a higher lipoprotein A, homocysteine, C-reactive protein, that could make you take your cholesterol more seriously. Maybe if your cholesterol was high normal, but you had elevated lipoprotein A, in my case, I've got a genetically high lipoprotein A, thankfully pretty low cholesterol, but I watch that stuff more closely because of the lipoprotein A. So you can't say that if those things are good, cholesterol doesn't matter. But you can say if those things are bad, cholesterol matters more. So cholesterol is central. All those things like inflammation and genetics, they, they might amplify it or they might not, but it's still there. It's still relevant all by itself. So that's the first part of this discussion. We've talked about the connections between thyroid health, cholesterol, heart disease. We discussed hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, and even Hashimoto's all by itself, and how all these things correlate with cardiac risks and how they may amplify or create the risks for cholesterol in general. In terms of action steps, you want to screen. You want to screen your fasting cholesterol levels and ideally be under 200 for your total and under 100 for LDL. Now, there are some nuances to that in some cases where the numbers are a bit different, but those are some great general targets. The other tests that I mentioned, there are things that if your cholesterol is at all a borderline or questionable, it's probably worth checking a few more of these new markers to see if you should be more concerned about it than you would be otherwise. But again, they don't take away the risk of cholesterol. So let's say you've got thyroid disease, cholesterol is not right, what do you do about it? Well, part two, <laughs> stay tuned. I'll talk about that in a following blog and video. In the meantime, take great care and we'll talk real soon.